The Raspberry Pi Pico is a cool little microcontroller that you can grab for as low as $4. It's extremely weak hardware. It's the kind of thing that you can use to run code for some smart home automation. It's not like it's stronger Pi Brothers that are like full computers that can emulate retro games. But what if it could? A few months ago, I came across this video by You Make Tech, where he made a custom handheld Game Boy emulator based around the Peanut GB emulator by Delta Beard. I thought it was a really cool project and decided to change it up a little to fit inside a real DMG shell. So instead of using his 3D printed design, I'm going with this clear DMG shell and using one of Natalie's button boards instead of this setup. This will allow me to use this emulator as though it were a real DMG using the real buttons and membranes from an original Game Boy. I've had these boards lying around for years after buying some from today's sponsor, PCBWay, for some other old projects. If you don't know, PCBWay makes, well, PCBs, and can even assemble them with all the components your projects may need. They also offer 3D printing, CNC machining, and other similar services to help you make your projects awesome on the inside and out. My favorite part of PCBWay is their pages of community-made projects. You'll see a ton of cool things to build, and a lot of them can be made entirely through PCBWay services, just like the DMG color I put together recently with the help of PCBWay. You can also find today's DMG button boards on the same community tab as well. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this part of the video. Now back to assembling this rat's nest of wires. While this may look like it's a very complicated build, I promise it's not. Most of these wires are just for buttons. There are a few for the screen, and thankfully our SD card reader is attached to our screen, so that's one less thing to worry about. Then all that's left is just the audio and power. I used an original DMG speaker for this, alongside the amp you make tech recommends, because the original speaker actually has the same specs as the one you make tech recommends. I also used the recommended charging board, but the USB-C version, and it's connected to an old SP battery. I do not recommend soldering wires to a battery like this. It's stupid and can be dangerous, but I did this years ago and I didn't want to buy an extra battery. It's just lying around, so I used it for this project. Just buy the battery that he recommends, please. Use that or any other LiPo battery that makes sense for this. Don't do what I did. And instead of using a power switch for this, I used one of these latching buttons that I had lying around. And all this is held together by a few screws, one heck of a lot of hot glue, and a few more screws. But before we button it up fully, we need to flash Peanut GB to the Pico and add our ROMs to the SD card. And that's really it. Turn it on, select your game, and it should work no problem. It is honestly a super simple build. It's just pretty time consuming. But the question is, should you do this? Well, if you are gonna do this and do it the way that I did it, get your button boards made with ENIG. I ordered these years ago before I knew any better. Button presses are just more accurate with gold compared to HASL. But I went the cheaper route back then and I regret it heavily. However, regardless of the build quality, is this project worthwhile? I mean, it's an original Game Boy emulator, so no Game Boy Color. And I'm honestly not even sure if all of the original Game Boy games work on here. The Pico is already overclocked heavily to run this emulator, but in my experience, it works just fine. The only real problem I have is 100% my fault. For some reason, I have to jumpstart this to turn it on. No matter how full the battery is, I have to have it plugged in to turn it on. But after that, I can unplug it and run it until it dies. I don't know what I did wrong, but I am too lazy to go back and fix it. Because for me, this project is more about showcasing the Pico's full potential and pushing it to the limits. It was fun to tinker with it and mix it up for a bit, but am I gonna daily drive this thing now? No. Am I ever gonna even play on it again? Probably not, but did I have fun building this? Well, not the messy soldering of all the wires part, but I did have fun making this as a whole. You can judge for yourself if I actually had fun building it by watching my tutorial that I posted on the second channel, Jake64. Fun fact, it was actually the last project I recorded before moving. I've just been putting this video off for a while because I had other projects I was obligated to post first. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I will link Natalie's button boards down below if you want to do it my way. I'll also link to you Make Tech's website if you want to follow his methods. But that's about it for me. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys.
I am sorry if I am nasally in this video. Allergies are kicking my butt. The pollen count is stupid high this year for some reason. Yay me.